he's praying to God, asking for God's intervention. I mean, that literally is what's happening here, though. He's not saying, like, I want to do these things. So, like, I never noticed that before. Because in those circumstances, what do we want to do? Take it matters into our own hand. In today's episode, Jason helps clear up some things for me about who our enemies are and whose job is it to take care of them. And we had a little discussion about David, which Jason's going to clar- clarify a little more. Yeah, well, just how much faith it takes to pray to God. You know, you're saying, like, God, I want you to take care of my enemies. You know, when anybody does something wrong to us, our instinct is to take it into our own hands and do something about it ourselves. Welcome to the 3D Disciples podcast, where we're working together to develop disciples who display God's love as we deploy into God's world. Join us on this journey by liking, subscribing, and following this channel. I'm your host, Hannah, and alongside us is the pastor of FBC Clarion, Jason Hunter. May Jesus help us climb to new heights. Hunting season has come to a close in Pennsylvania. Sadly, yes. Yes. Is that why you're wearing orange or is there some other reason? Thanks for asking. (laughs) I was told two people. (laughs) I'm wearing my bright orange Clemson University sweatshirt because they are the two time, two times in the last three years. They just won the national championship in soccer. Uh, Yep. So second time in three years. Nice. And Clemson's your your hometown area. I'm alumni. Oh, oh, that's right. You are. I forgot. (laughs) I'm an alum. Clemson. All right. So you got that. You got that in there. Good. And they beat our arch rivals, Notre Dame. (laughs) Well, that's funny. You talk about rivals (laughs) because today we're talking about enemy relationships and being a peacemaker. Oh. Do you have enemies for Clemson? Yeah. (laughs) Everybody. (laughs) All right. Um, So these two sermons were actually preached by Randy, who was a guest on our podcast um, in season one, episode 13. So if you want to get to know a little bit more about Randy, um, you can go back to that episode. And also these sermons are available on FBC Clarion Sermons podcast or on our YouTube channel. Highly recommend listening to both as well. I thought he did an excellent job talking about these subjects. Um, but we're just going to dive into them maybe a little bit deeper. Um, or maybe take some rabbit trails off of where he was at. Okay. Okay. So, well, I'll just start with this question, Jason, for you. Can you provide us with a story from the Bible where the where a person loved their enemy? Um, well... There's an illustration that Jesus uses mm-hmm. called the Good Samaritan, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and so that is, you know, part of um, that idea. Um, you know, we see Jesus uh, talking to the Samaritan woman, and that would have been one of his enemies too. Oh, I never um, thought about him having enemies. Yeah, technically. Well, yeah, technically. In, in the culture of the time. In the culture, of t- exactly. Yeah. And and his disciples are shocked when they come back, and he's sitting here talking to this Samaritan and a woman. Yeah. And so, um, you know, uh, Jesus interacts with a uh, with a centurion who who was an occupying Roman, and heals uh, his servant for him. Mm. And uh, oh yeah, I forgot and, about that story. And so there's Jesus himself has quite a uh, quite a few interactions with enemies on various and levels, um, and the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Quite often he interacts with them too, mm-hmm. um, you know. And so uh, he's he himself interacts with a lot of enemies. Mm-hmm. So that's maybe somewhere we can dig to to get some illustrations of of how maybe we should interact with our enemies. Then yeah. Um, what about someone who's a peacemaker that we can read more about? Any other illustrations there? Peacemaker. One that just came to my mind as I asked that question was David. I can't. Okay, I'm not going to get all these details right. But David came to an area where him and all his, I think it was all his military men were trying to run from Saul. And they asked this man, I forget his name, uh, for food, and then he was going to make a big deal about it, maybe kill them, I can't remember, but then the wife steps in and, like, brings them food and, like, makes peace between the really... Yeah, well... You know and, that one? Uh, vaguely. Vaguely. <laughs> some, some, of those, <laughs> some of those stories of Anna. David and his escapades in the Old Testament, there's yeah. so many of those those there kind are. of things there that 
pitch. You're like, oh, I got to look that one up and reread that again. Think about that a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there might be a, a more a more Sunday school answer to that, and mm-hmm. uh, being um, Abraham and Lot. Oh. And, you know, when Abraham and his kin, you know, their their servants are fighting and quarreling and Abraham, like, you pick and then we'll go the other way. Oh, my, we actually taught that in Sunday school this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, funny. So. Yeah. so if you dig for it, I mean, we can find multitude of examples um, for peacemakers and how to react with our enemies. Another way that um, Randy described the peacemakers, he like gave a list of four things. So he's described that a peacemaker, one, makes peace with God. Okay. Two, makes peace with self. Three, makes peace between self and others. And then four, makes peace between other people who might be in conflict with each other. Um, I had always kind of, when I thought of a peacemaker, like I just focused on like, it's my job to make peace with others. What do you think he meant by like the other three types, like God, self, and... Well, uh, as far as making peace with God, there's th- that is through Jesus. The Bible says there's one mediator mm-hmm. between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So, so, so really, you know, that's kind of accepting the gospel, knowing the gospel, and so for us to have peace with God, it it goes through Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, first, we don't probably often think of ourselves as enemies of God. And and that's really what we are. We're rebellious, and and so for us to make peace with God through Christ is, you know, what we'd call salvation. Being a disciple, you know, that's kind of step one. Mm-hmm. Um, making peace with yourself is, I, I think, just kind of dealing with who you are. Uh, we recently talked about uh, a book, Father Lawrence, and how he struggled with how he saw himself, you know, and like he, he was wretched and, and horrible and he would often fail God and he would, mm-hmm. uh, he would confess and, and repent and, you know, and, um, and, and he didn't beat himself up with that. He seemed to be at peace with himself. He like, he knew who he was. He knew what he needed from God. He needed grace. He needed God's mm-hmm. mercy, you know, and, and just being able to live in that, uh, space where you realize that, you know, how this relationship works mm-hmm. and, and being at peace with that, um, not thinking too highly of ourselves, not thinking too lowly of ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, um, but just kind of having a real comfortable, peaceful understanding of, you know, I rely on grace. I work as hard as I can, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, both, mm-hmm. you know, and kind of being at peace with that. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's what I would say to that. Um, Peace with others, obviously, we're told to do that. And and I think a lot of that comes from forgiveness. We've talked a lot about forgiveness and, mm-hmm. and forgiving others. Um, you know, and, and the verse that really strikes me on that, it says, as far as it is up to you, live at peace with others. Mm-hmm. And so our, our relationship between others, we have only so much control over that. And so I can forgive people and I can go, I can go a very long ways into making peace with them. Mm-hmm. Um, they may not reciprocate and so that you know there can still be broken relationships but i need to go as far as i can I th- and i just think too often we don't go anywhere <laughs> you know it's like ah, oh, you know i'd forgive them or you know you know we can yeah. make things right i'm here waiting for them to ask yeah and that's not you yeah know, that's not really seeking peace and pursuing peace right um right. and so i think we need to do that you know and really push ourselves to go as far as we can and, and forgiveness is the first step of that it's like forgiving somebody whether they ask for it or not that you know that sets you up to be at peace with them yeah. and you know like i've done all i can and do all i can mm-hmm. uh and then brokering peace between other parties uh, i think that's um you know part of our job as um Especially within the body itself. Yeah. Because I was going to ask a question, too, about, like, he was talking mainly about, like, brothers. And um, I was just a little bit confused. Is there a difference between, like, a brother and a neighbor? Because we're supposed to love our neighbors, but then our brothers we also treat even a little bit more differently. Yeah, well, there's a difference. There's there's different um, levels of what we have to do, I guess, or expectations of... of uh, you know, there's a place in the Bible that talks about Christians shouldn't even sue one another, mm-hmm. like th- that that it that it presents such a bad 
image to the rest of the world. You know, here we are talking about brotherly love and loving one another and both being children of the God of love. And y'all can't get your differences figured out that that doesn't add up Mm -hmm. to the world. And so, you know, we are certainly should be held to a higher standard with our brothers. And we, you know, and sadly, we know uh, that we have a lot of impersonal interpersonal conflict within a church. Mm -hmm. Um, And we should really think deeply about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that should really concern us. Mm-hmm. And, and, and again, this is where, about, well, I'll, I'd forgive them if they'd ask. Yeah. Uh, then you're, you're, you're falling really far short of what it is to be a peacemaker. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, that's a peace giver, not a peacemaker. Mm. And, I like it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. like I'm willing to give peace, but I'm not going to make it. Right. You know, you know I'm not going to. And, and these two, that's a whole lot more work. Yeah. And these two subjects are in the unity chapter. Yeah. And I can see how like, how is that form unity? If you're willing to just, you know, say, I'm waiting for you to come to me. Well, that's not going <clears> to <throat> make unity. Right. <laughs> right. And another thing that Randy had said, too, that I think fits in with what we're discussing is he said, I like this. You want to get rid of an enemy? Make them your friend. <laughs> and I was going to ask how you do that, but you kind of hit on that about, you know, doing the other parts that we've discussed about self-denying and forgiving. So it's kind of hard for me to understand this enemy relationship when I read some psalms. There's some psalms that talk about enemies in a very different way than like it was preached on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring up some examples. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the writer is very descriptive on how they want their enemies to be treated by God. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. So in Psalm 35, one through three, it says, oppose my opponents, Lord, fight for those who fight me. Take your shields, large and small, and come to my aid. Draw the spear and the javelin against my pursuers and assure me I am your deliverance. Psalm 18, 37 through 40 says, I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I do not take back until they are wiped out. I crush them and they cannot get up. They fall beneath my feet. You have clothed me with strength of battle. You subdue my adversaries beneath me. You have made my enemies retreat before me and I annihilate those who hate me. (laughs) So where I'm lost is there's like an oxymoron here. between what we're discussing in the New Testament and what was going on here in Psalm. At least it feels like there's an oxymoron. Can you help me work through that? I think so, but okay. you got to give me, you got to stretch this so I can uh, <laughs> get to the Bible verse here. Get to the Bible verse. Okay. That kind of like deals with this. Yeah. So this is from the New clash. Testament. Yeah. Um, oh, I think I know where you're going to go. Is it something where Jesus said, you have heard that? No. Oh, okay. No, this is from Romans chapter 12. Okay. It said, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For as written, vengeance is mine. I will pray, says the Lord. Uh, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. But by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay. I was just reading that today. Okay. So what's the psalmist doing? Still annihilating the enemies, but letting no. God do it. <laughs> well, he's praying to yeah. God. He's turning. He's turning his enemies over to God. He's expressing. He's expressing his desires. He's expressing his frustrations. Mm-hmm. He's expressing to God pretty honestly, mm-hmm. you know, where he's at. Um, but but he is leaving it into the hands of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's other ones he he's questioning God, like how long? How long is it going to be before you defend me? How long mm-hmm. are you? You know. And and so uh, that seems to me to line up at least partially with what it's saying there in 12 is that we're not to avenge ourselves. We're to mm. leave that to the wrath of God, mm. you know, and okay. but what, you know, and, and here and, and you got to think about this. Now, this is David and Saul oh, yeah. and, and this is Saul in a lot of cases, maybe not in every case, but but Saul would fit. Many and how does David treat Saul? doesn't do that no he no. doesn't he and he actually one time has the opportunity yep that he could have done it and he's like no i will not strike him. i will not strike yeah. the king i'll let god take care of it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so he lives out in a lot of ways he he always respects saul he 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 honors him as the king even though mm-hmm. saul was trying to kill him and i'm sure some of those psalms are like how long lord before you <laughs> You know, you know, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm doing right by this guy. I'm not okay. striking him. I'm blessing him. I'm honoring him, you know, and he's out to kill me yeah. at every turn. Um, and so I, I think that's part of it is that 
by our hands, we treat our enemies kindly. We do okay. good things to them. We bless them, you know, and we have to trust that God knows what's fair and right. And at some point we'll bring that about, mm. um, mm-hmm. you know. And, and that's what like the psalmist is seeking is the Lord to do that, not at, from his own hand. Right. Which if now that you say that, I see that clear as day. Like he's not saying, I want to draw my javelin and my spear. You know, I want. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, so that's that's at least part of what's going on with the Psalms. I believe that he's turning to the Lord there. I mean, that helps me juggle that better than it did before. Yeah, and, I and, that. Yeah. and and then there's an Old Testament, New Testament thing going on, too, mm-hmm. um, because li- clearly God sends the Israelites to defeat their enemies sometimes mm-hmm. and to and that the armies that the Israelites, the armies of the God of God are sometimes they are the wrath of God sometimes mm-hmm. on on those who would oppose God. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he sends David to conquer and slay and defeat his in, his enemies, God's enemies sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's by by literally by David's own hand that Goliath is killed. Yeah. One who mocks God. <laughs> and he yeah. you know, and he and so sometimes and so, you know, that goes into a whole nother you want to talk about a rabbit trail. <laughs> yeah, a rabbit trail. <laughs> you know, let's yeah. go into That's a, a Bugs war. Bunny trail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, war and just war versus, you yeah. know, can can a Christian go to war and all that kind of stuff. I mean, stuff. can we get into that a little bit? Because I was actually sent <laughs> oh boy. I was sent a question. And um, I just think it's worthwhile to bring it in for the person who sent the question. And it says, does God condemn those who seek to be soldiers for their country and who end up in turn being a soldier they have to kill? So that was their question. Well, um, does, well, no. (laughs) Can we qualify and nuance that enough? Yeah. Um, I think this person's just seeking some peace themselves. And that's probably why they asked this question. Well, again, you know, God uses people to mete out his justice. And sometimes and, and in other cases it God used pagans to mete out his justice on the Israelites, you mm-hmm. know. He would bring Nebuchadnezzar, he would bring the Assyrians and the Babylonians and all these other people to yeah. to capture, you know, and that and it was clear. I mean, the Bible makes it clear that was part of God's plan. That was the wrath of God coming on the, you know, the Hebrew children for rejecting him. Mm-hmm. And so uh, soldiers can play a very important role in in God's construction, mm-hmm. God's plan of how he raises and tears down kingdoms, you mm-hmm. know, countries. And that, again, that's in God's hands, and the Bible makes that clear. Yeah. And warfare and warriors is part of that. Uh, I, I think the nuance of that, for a Christian soldier, they have to settle that in their heart. Mm-hmm. You know, and... And and I've met a lot of them who would who would say they felt called by God to do that, mm. like that was part of mm-hmm. you know. And there's a lot of them who like for God and country mm-hmm. uh, that they answer this call. They feel like it's a duty, um, you know. Uh, in World War II, there's a lot of men who signed up for the draft, and they saw Hitler. They saw him as an as an evil, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and that they were they were part of you know answering a call, a duty, a higher calling. Um, you know, there and there's some people who aren't Christians who do that, and they may be being used by God too, and just not realize it. Yeah. And so, is there such a thing as a just war? Well, I don't know. If that's the, <laughs> Maybe we're getting if, too if, deep. If here, that's yeah. the best term or yeah. not, but does God use those things to orchestrate His plans in the world? And are people on battlefields part of that plan? Mm-hmm. It has been for a long time, um, and I imagine it will still can. can, can uh, continue to be so yeah. yes I believe you can be a soldier and be part of God's plan for your life yeah I mean what I was thinking as you were talking too was like we again we brought this up two seconds ago but about the brother Lawrence and the practicing his, practicing his presence thing I mean it's the same thing you can do as a if you are a soldier is like just wondering like Lord what's your will in every every yeah. s- moment that's happening right here and you know and, that, and, and, and that comes down to a very 
personal thing, you know, like one of my favorite stories from World War II is the story of Desmond Dawes, uh, who was a Christian but was a pacifist. And, oh, yeah. I've seen you know, that, yeah. You, the movie Hacksaw Ridge. Mm-hmm. You've seen yeah, I've seen that. the movie. That's you, about you, all yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, he refused to take up arms, but he wanted to serve his country and right. ends up saving 70 some men, you know, from a battlefield or mm-hmm. whatever. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, that was clearly of God, too. And, but I would say, whether you're carrying a weapon or not, that, that you can be used by God. I, I think the Bible seems to affirm that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't, if you guys have questions further about this, I'm sure we can make a whole episode about <laughs> it. But um, we'll just move on a little bit yeah. out of that. That'd be good. We'll have a guest. Yeah. <laughs> I know some military men will have oh, come in. That'd be, be fun. Be yeah. guests and get their perspectives. That would be. Um, okay, so when Jesus says to love your en- enemies, I always thought that he meant to love them like, kind of like I do a spouse, like I adore them. I have like this kind of fuzzy feeling and emotion. Mm. But Randy brought up something that I think really helped clear that up for me, that this is, again, we have discussed this, I think, on the podcast before, that the word love in English does not translate as well in the Bible. Yeah. So there's kind of different types of love, and he described it as more like the agape love, like the unconditional. So basically, no matter how someone treats you, you are to be Christ-like to them in return. Yeah, do the best for them, even at personal sacrifice. Yeah, and that... And that idea gave me some freedom on how to love my enemies because I felt like I actually could now because, like, that warm, fuzzy feeling is not very different. So, uh, yeah, I was going to ask if you're in the same mindset as Oh, I'm absolutely in the same mindset, but I would let's take it a little bit further. Who's your enemy? Uh, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, Randy described it as like someone who's against you or persecutes you or says anything about you and to a degree that's how we would answer that and probably to a degree that's what the bible means but there's a there's another passage of scripture that tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood Mm. but against powers and principalities Mm -hmm. and and ephesians yeah and so what we should realize is a lot of times and this this helps me love those people who are difficult Mm -hmm. um is to realize they're really not my enemy Mm -hmm. they may oppose uh, my thinking, they may oppose my beliefs, and they may oppose, they may think differently about a lot of things. They may answer very important questions completely different than I am. Um, but just because they're they're in opposition to my stance mm-hmm. doesn't they don't have to be my enemy. Yeah. And 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 really, when I look at those people, I think the first thing we should thought, and I think this goes a long ways to helping us love people, mm-hmm. is if they don't have Christ, they're going to hell. And would you really even want that on your enemy? And so our true enemy is Satan. Yeah. That's our real enemy. Now, um, <laughs> that's again, so we're going to go back and say, God, you know, destroy Satan. We're going to put him in your hands and let mm-hmm. your full wrath be upon his head. Mm-hmm. Like, let him have it and let him have it good. You know, I'm not sure I'm going to love Satan, but but I think that where it talks about loving our enemies, it's, I think, a way to do that to start to declassify them as enemies Mm -hmm. you know and and opposition and i I think this is where we do a disservice we and this is this is rampant within our society today if you're opposed to me if you're my opposition if you don't completely agree with me then i must hate you Mm -hmm. and and you must go away you must hate me and we must be enemies yep you know, and like what we can't just disagree. Yeah. We we can't have differences of opinion and still care about one another. We can't have differences of opinion and still want the best for one another. We yeah. can't have difference of opinion and still respect one another. Yeah, that was something I mean Randy said at the beginning of one of his sermons was like there's a million things that we could not agree on, that we could just not be unified over. And yeah. You know. Yeah. And so and so I think that goes a long ways to I think really thinking about is this really my enemy or is this somebody who's just Maybe different or that or yeah well yeah. From, anywhere from different to lost yeah and if they're lost shouldn't that spark a pity and a concern and a and and, agape love that you know about. like hey you know and if they are lost how would you what would you expect of them but to act the way they're acting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very good so that's enemy relationships and peacemakers Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Our prayer is that you've heard something today that will help you be a better disciple of Jesus Christ. We also want to encourage you to make sure you take your next step in your discipleship journey by considering what it is you would do about what you heard today and then go and do it. Finally, we want to invite you to join us 
at 10.30 on Sundays, either at our Main Street campus in downtown Clarion between Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's or online at fbcclarion.com. God bless.